the third episode of the Augment and Tweak Crochet Vlogcast. My name is Sydney and I'm coming to you from Northeastern Pennsylvania. Um, thank you so much for joining me today while I talk about what kind of yarny things I've been up to in the past couple weeks. Uh, there's not a lot today, but I, I have a couple things to fill the void. Uh, anyway, uh, you could find me online as oddmint.tweak on Instagram and oddmint.tweak, all one word, on Ravelry. I'll put links to those down below. Uh, you could also email me at sem.crochet at gmail.com. And, well, let's just jump into it. In terms of finished objects, I only have one, and that is Coraline. I showed you to her, mm, showed her to you, not showed you to her, uh, showed you, oh my gosh, showed her to you a couple weeks ago. At that point, she was just a head, some hair, and her torso. But since then, I have finished her skirt, made her little legs with rain boots, and I gave her a little dragonfly clip and button eyes. I did have a lot of trouble coming up with her rain jacket. I, I think I did this like three or four times. I have like the first iteration of it here and that was just it was way too stiff i couldn't get her little arms through here and i've made i've made doll jackets like this before and didn't have a problem with it problem with it but i don't know what happened this time just something did not work out that kind it just it just wasn't working out so instead of doing it like you could kind of see how I did the sleeves here where I just kind of left a gap but went straight across instead of doing that I I, th I don't know what kind of neck this is called but I you could see it's kind of more square And I, I kind of figured that out. I think next time I would do the body in single crochets instead of the half double. So it would look a little more like that. But I think it came out really well. The hood doesn't go up. I had I had a little trouble with hoods, but it, it doesn't fit on her head. And I'm, I'm okay with that. I could live with that. Um, a little bit about her. I, almost all of my dolls I crochet with a C hook. I think that's a 2.75 millimeter. Yeah, 2.75 millimeters and worsted weight cotton. Just any kind of cotton. Um, usually not like sugar and cream or like peaches and cream. I just think that's like a little bit too rough. Um, generally I use Knit Pick Stishy, um, which is the, her skin here and the both colors on her shirt, that light pink and the coral. Um, I also use Hobby Lobby I Love This Cotton, which is sometimes a little too soft uh, and it like fuzzes up a little easier than the rest of these cottons, but I used that for her raincoat and rain boots and her skirt, I believe. And then her hair is Paintbox Cotton Aran. I, I don't know the colors. I don't know the colorways for almost any of these, honestly. Um, and then for her dragonfly clip, I just used some scrap fingering weight and a 1.5 millimeter hook that I use usually for, for uh, thinner doilies with thread. And then 
her eyes, I actually glued on. I, I should have sewn them on before I stuffed her head, but that didn't happen and I already had her hair on and I wasn't going to rip that out. So I, I used uh, tacky glue to glue those on. Uh, something I would like to also do is maybe get a couple tiny yellow buttons for the side, one side of her raincoat. I think that would be a cute touch. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy with how she came out. She's cute. But yeah, like I said, I finished her last night and I was super, super pleased. I still have to take pictures of her for, for the gram, for Instagram. Uh, excuse me. I'm a little stuffy. Allergies. Uh, but yeah, she's cute and I'm very happy with her. And that's the, the only finished object I have. Um, I did start something new this week and oh, let me just get rid of these. And what I started is the, here we go. This is the From the Ashes Shawl by Rachie Newen Designs. Um, it's, when it's blocked out, it's gonna have this really, really pretty, I don't, I don't know if you could see it, like really pretty lacy pattern in it. And uh, there's a crochet along being hosted for this pattern at the moment on Instagram and Ravelry. I'll link to the Ravelry pattern and the, the group the crochet along is being hosted in. But I saw it and I think thought it would be super, super cute in this, like I saw it and I knew I wanted to use this yarn for it. This is Hugh Loco. Um, Phyllis Sock, which is a 7525 Superwash Merino and Nylon fingering weight, three, uh, sorry, 463 yards per 100 grams in the colorway Girls Talk. And I got this in a D stash group on Facebook, like a year ago, and I just haven't, hadn't found the right, come on, the right pattern for it. But when I saw that shawl, I, th I thought this would be perfect. And this is eventually going to go to my mother for, well, depending on how quickly I get it done, either uh, Mother's Day or her birthday in a few months. But I do think it will be done in time for Mother's Day. I have like two repeats of the, the like, lace pattern left, which is like from there to there. So it'd be like a little bit bigger. Um, I'm, I love working with this yarn. It's a great, great pattern, but I, I made the mistake I make every time I, I start a shawl or, or something. I should have gone up a hook size and now I'm too far in to, to go back because I I don't think it's going to matter much because it's going to be blocked out and it's going to grow so much but it just feels a little stiff right now and I make that mistake all the time and I just need to like like just remember to go up a hook size when I make shawls when I want that kind of like drape uh I also have my color craze fiber uh progress keeper on here that is a little chocolate chip muffin super cute i got that at the allentown fiber festival um what size hook am i using for this i'm using an uh 3.75 millimeter but i should have gone up to a g um yeah four millimeter it just, it's just a little stiff, but I am really happy with this. It's going to be really pretty 
once it's blocked out and the lace pattern can come out. And I think my mom's gonna like it. It's, it's her colors. I really like the, like there's like browns and pops of pinks, but it's all this really pretty like steel gray base. Super pretty. This is my first time working with Hue Loco and I am pleased. So that should hopefully be done by the next time I record, but we'll see. Like I said, two more repeats, but it's, it's the kind of pattern like I need to look at for every row and then I could go from there, but I don't know. I don't know if it's just me or if it should be like super easy to remember but I'm having a little bit of trouble remembering the repeats. So I, I do have to refer to the pattern a lot. Um, but yeah, that is everything new I have. However, I have like mm, five or six works in progress that I have not touched in months and months and months and I thought I'd show them to you and then maybe decide whether they're going to be finished or whether they're going to be frogged. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna start now. Uh, oh, this is, I talked about this in my first episode. I'm gonna frog this. The bear is too stiff. I'll start over eventually with a larger hook. And she obviously, my daughter obviously did not get this for Easter, but maybe for her birthday in October. <laughs> That'll give me enough time to actually sit down and do it. So that's gonna go in my frog pile. That's gonna be frogged. Uh, let's see in here. Oh, this is like one of my favorite project bags. These are the different houses and buildings and shops from the show Gilmore Girls. Uh, I got this from Good Stuff Crafts on Etsy and it's just super cute and I have my little clever clove uh, cat in a yarn basket pin on here, which is super cute. Okay, I didn't get very far in this pattern either. If I recall, I think I screwed it up and it, it wasn't matching. Uh, this is the in, hold on, I have Indigo Shrug by Tatiana I cannot pronounce that, her last name. I'm, I'm very, very sorry. Uh, she is Lilla Bjorn Crochet on Ravelry and Instagram, I believe. But this was going to be like a, uh, like a cocoon shrug. It starts with this solid granny in the middle and then it does like repeats of lace patterns. And then you kind of like sew it up and wear it. Uh, I am using, let's see, Teeny Button Studios Breezy Fingering, which is a 50% superwash merino wool and 50% cotton. It is 436 yards per 100 grams in the colorway Owlery. And I really, really love this yarn. It's soft and it would be so perfect for like a, a summer shrug like this, but I don't know. I think, I think I might rip this out because I want to make a, uh, a tank top from this yarn instead. It's really light and very summery and it has like these speckles of brown and gold on this like tonal mint base. It's so pretty. And I, I really do love that pattern, but I think, I think I might rip it out to make this tank top I have in mind, but 
I'm gonna put that for now in the frog pile. I have, I do have like three balls of it, so I would have enough to make a tank, I think, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I'm gonna, I'm going to put it in the frog pile for now, but it might stay a shrug, but I might also start over because I messed up my count. We'll see. It's going in frogged for now. Next we have, what's in here? This is another bag I got from Knit Picks, probably in a promotion, but it's cute. Oh, I have my, let's see, take everything out. <laughs> my knit collage cushion. I, I got this yarn in <clears throat> a yarn crush. Yeah, yarn crush subscription box. And I had no idea what to do with it. So I just kind of started crocheting in a circle. Just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Didn't come out super circular. It's more of a... Hmm, how many sides is this? One, two, three, four, five, six. Like, pen... No, set. What's a six-sided? shape. Sexagon? It's not a... No. It's a hexagon. All right. Um, anyway, this is Knit Collage Daisy Chain in the colorway Chili Pepper. And it's a really fun yarn. It's like this kind of roving with, you could see like the, whoops, kind of like sparkles and different bits and bobs, like these little, Jesus, little daisies and pieces of fabric. And there's like bits of lace in there too. It's really, really pretty, but I, I just didn't know what to do with it. So it's going to become a cushion. And then I had some of this yarn left over from uh, a previous project. This is Allison Barnes Studios. Allison Barnes Yarn. Uh, this is her classic worsted in the colorway coral. I, I don't think she makes this anywhere anymore. This was one of the first indie dyed yarns I have, I got years, 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 years ago. Um, it is a 100% superwash merino. I think there were like 200 yards in it, but I started making like the backing of the cushion, like the back of the cushion but I don't remember what hook size I was using or where I was in like the circle pattern. I, I could figure that part out, but I don't know what hook size I was using. So I'll probably start the back of this over and then go from there. I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna keep this one because I think it would be really pretty when it's done. I think they look really really pretty together and then like like the ties that tie on the uh the little daisies kind of match the yarn there I think that'll be pretty um I don't remember what hook size I was using for the Allison Barnes yarn but I'm pretty sure for the daisy chain I was using an eight millimeter and like I said I just kept going around and around and around, increasing as I went. Uh, I think it'll be nice. I don't think it's gonna go with my, well, like like my decor, really, but it'll find its place in my home. 
All right, that's gonna go in my keep pile. <clears throat> what is next? Let's see. Can I guess what's in here? Oh, I know what's in here. This is kind of half a fin finished object. These are the Seg Socks by Addy Day Designs and the yarn I used for these is, let's see, let's see, it was a sock set from Yarn, whoop, Yarn Cafe Creations. It's like this white with blue and green speckles and then this darker blue mini skein that went with it. And this is on her Biscotti Sock fingering weight uh, base. It's an 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon, 437 yards per 100 grams. In the colorway Stay Out of the Forest, which is was from her uh, My Favorite Murder collection, uh, which is one of my favorite podcasts. And that's pretty much why I picked up uh, that sock set. Um, I really, really enjoyed making this. However, I did not like how it felt on my foot. It was just a little bit awkward, but it came out so well. I just don't want to make another one. And I know if I do, I'm just not going to wear them, which would be in my opinion, a waste of yarn. So I'm probably going to frog these and do something else with it. It just makes me really sad because I really enjoy, I really, really enjoyed this pattern. I just know I'm not gonna use it. They're so pretty. Well, they would be pretty if you could see them. Look at that. But yeah, nothing against the pattern. It's just not something I see myself using and I would rather put this yarn into something else to be enjoyed. Maybe, I think maybe I'll make a, like another mounted doily mandala with this. I think that's a good yarn for it. Um, but yeah, like I said, that these were the Seg Socks by Addy Day Designs. I did use a 3.5 millimeter hook. I remember this because I wrote everything down and I'll put, I'll put a link to that down below along with the yarn. But for now, they are going in the, in the frog pile. Sorry, socks. Uh, I don't know what's in here. This is a bag <laughs> I, I actually made. It's not very good. It's the first bag I've ever made and I've never made anything since it. Uh, but I made it with this Halloween fabric and it's like, it's, it's supposed to be reversible. I don't think it would look very good on the inside and my, my seams aren't great, but it was, it was a good first attempt at a, at a Japanese knot bag. Oh, I wrote down what hook I used in there. That's good. All right. I know what this is. This is a Christmas tree. I started in November as part of the Amigurumi Advent uh, crochet along in which I did half of the tree the first day, which was like a little teddy bear, and then nothing after that. I got very, very busy in December with orders uh, and commissions and stuff. So... <laughs> 
that didn't turn out how I exactly wanted it to. But I am going to finish this. I think this would be a really pretty decoration. And it doesn't just have to be for Christmas. This could, well, I don't think I would let the kids play with this. Mostly because of what yarn I'm using. Um, this is Countess Ablaze Spirit DK, which is a 96% Falkland Merino and 4% Lurex, which is the, the sparkle in there. In the colorway, Blind Dates. And I got this from the, uh, there's something on Instagram around November, uh, called the, oh, uh, what is it called? Oh my goodness. Oh, get your yarn wishes granted. And I... This is my first year uh, participating in it, and I sent out some yarn and sent out some patterns. And one of my wishes was sparkly yarn or DK yarn, and somebody sent me this really, really pretty green sparkly DK yarn, which is super, super pretty. And also my first time working with Countess Ablaze. But I'll finish this, and I know what size hook I used. Um, I probably won't finish this until probably November when I get back into the Christmas spirit because uh, I'm not feeling it right now. I, I don't want it to be cold again. I'm looking forward to making cooler makes, um, like that tank top and something you don't snuggle up in, lacy shawls. I'll, um, I'll, I'm gonna finish that. That's in my finish pile. This, this was in my finish pile. And the last thing I have here is, okay, in here I have nine balls. Well, I think eight now. Eight balls of Shepshes, Shepies, mm. Stone Wash, which is a a sport weight yarn, and hold on, I wrapped down the. It's a sport weight yarn, seventy eight percent cotton, twenty two percent acrylic, and it's super super soft. Uh yeah. And what I was making with that, where's the, oh, here we go. This is the beginnings of a My Precious Shawl by, uh, the designer is called By Katarina. And it's, I, I think I, was using a four millimeter hook for the brim and then a 4.5 millimeter hook for the the body. But I, hold on. I was afraid, I think I stopped because I thought it was going to be too small. I, hold on, let me get rid of those. I was afraid, like it's supposed to be an oversized sweater, but it does not, it, it the neck, I think, is too small. I think I need to go up a size. I'm pretty sure I was making the the medium large, but maybe I need to make, like, the large extra large. Or go up a hook size, or maybe two hook sizes to get... I, I'm pretty sure I met Gage on this, too, so I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. The problem with this is this yarn is super, super hard to frog because it catches on everything. Like I'm, I'm trying right now and 
you have to go super, super slow. Um, this yarn actually came in a kit uh, for something completely different that I nixed. Uh, it was supposed to be the Huga Shawl, which was a crochet along from Shep Shep Shepius. Shep I'm just gonna say that Shepius. Um, and that was basically just a solid single crochet stole about this long and then like cross stitch embroidery on it. And I learned super quickly that that was not the kind of project I wanted to make. The, the finished objects, the finished product was so beautiful, uh, but I did not want to make it just wasn't me. So I've, I've been trying to find a new pattern for all of this stone wash. Like it came with a bunch of like, uh, cotton yarns that you used to cross stitch with. Um, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do with those either. I think I might make, uh, like granny squares. Um, but I've tried, I've, I've picked out like two or three patterns for this and I saw that the the my precious sweater and it's it's like a pattern of you can kind of see it shaping up there diamonds all throughout but I just I don't know I'm probably gonna try to frog this and start over but this is the the sweater I want to make with it and like you know it doesn't it might not look like this is too small but it's supposed to be like a wider well maybe not maybe I'm just hmm maybe I could keep going for now and until like I get to the arms and then see how that goes if I need to frog this this seems like it's a lot easier to frog actually than the single crochet of that shawl because I I ended up just leaving that go it was not coming out I was ripping the yarn and it was like like literally ripping the yarn and it was coming apart in my hands but we'll see we'll see how that goes maybe I'll maybe I'll take another look at that pattern oh here this is <laughs> hang on this is what's left of my my Huga shawl. It started off with like these really pretty baubles and then some surface crochet. And then this was all cross stitched, but I ripped it out because I tried to rip out the, Jesus. Now it's coming apart. Oh God. Yeah, see, came apart. Just wasn't worth it if it was going to be in pieces. If I need an extra ball, I'll buy an extra ball. But I don't really know what to do with this. It's pretty though. Like I said, the finished, like the, the result would have been gorgeous, but I, if I don't want to crochet something, I just, I don't do it. It's like pulling teeth and that's not, how I want to enjoy my time. So I'm going to put this in the, the keep pile for now and give it another shot. So that's one, two, three. I'm keeping one, two, three. I'm frogging. Nice. Uh, one more thing I wanted to show you is this. I was, I was fooling around the other night with some yarns from my stash and I found this beautiful fade. That's one yarn. This is another, this bottom one. And now I have to find like a three color shawl I could use this with because it's so pretty. This is, this top one is Black Cat Fibers in the colorway Dirt Nap. The middle is Bay Street Yarns, uh, 
I think it was a one of a kind colorway. And this bottom is Knitted Wit in the colorway Acadia National Park from her color uh, National Park line. But it's it's just perfect. I was looking in my stash and I was like, you know what? Those would look really good together. I wonder if I have like these two, the the Bay Street and the Knitted Wit and then this Black Cat Fibers I just got at the Allentown Fiber Festival. So I quickly wound that up just so I could make this little swatch and it's perfect. So if you have any suggestions for like a three color fade crochet shawl, send them my way. Um, I've already made the flat iron shawl and I, I did enjoy making it, but I don't want to do it again right now, probably, probably in the future, but I want something a little bit different for this. I have one ball of each, so three color fade, keep me posted. Um, but yeah, that's, that's all I have for today. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you liked what you just watched, please remember to like and subscribe if you want to be notified, uh, for future episodes. I'm really going to try to stick to this, like, every other week pace, but sometimes life happens and we'll, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in a couple weeks. Bye!